Good morning, Devils fans. Uh, feeling a little bit under the weather this morning myself. Uh, so sorry if I don't have my usual exuberance in today's video, uh, but obviously wanted to get a lot of this info out for you guys as we do have a game tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern start versus the Colorado Avalanche, obviously out in Colorado. Uh, but before I get into the full-on preview and deep dive of the Avalanche, a little bit of uh, news to come out about some of our injuries, uh, article by Ryan Novozinski at NJ.com helped shed some light in an interview he did with our uh, general manager, Tom Fitzgerald, of uh, what we could possibly expect timeline-wise. Now, Ryan himself uh, did say that it seems like No Second Miller might be back sooner than Jack and Nico, uh, but the quote he then followed up uh, as his basis for that analysis from Tom I didn't quite read it that same exact way. I usually give the benefit of the doubt to the writer because they typically will have more context around said quotes and everything uh, compared to how it actually just lays out in the article. But essentially, what he was saying was that uh, the timeline is more straightforward on Nosek and Miller as far as their return goes, where Jack and Nico's timelines are much more up in the air. Makes sense to me, obviously, Nico and Jack's are much more recent. All signs are pointing towards a Nico concussion. Uh, it does seem like the day by day, not day to day, uh, that we've been hearing from Nico is just he could wake up one morning feeling great, get a practice in, feel great, and be ready to go. Or as long as he is experiencing the concussion symptoms, it could be weeks uh, before his return as well. So it's very much up in the air in the day by day, week to week type range for Nico. Obviously, hoping and wishing the best for him there, but right now it's looking like we have no need to rush him back by any means. Uh, Tom even says, are Jack and Nico at 75% better than whoever we could call up at 100% as far as effectiveness on the ice? The answer to that is obviously yes, uh, but we want these guys to be ready to go, and as long as you know we don't absolutely fall off a cliff here over the next couple weeks, uh, as far as you know, p gaining points in our games, uh, there's no reason to rush them back. I'd rather them be uh, as healthy as possible come playoffs. Yes, we would like Jack to be back for that 100-point season, uh, MVP-level season, Art Ross-level season. Uh, Nico is finally getting the Selkie hype. We would love for him to get back in and really cement his name there. But much more important than all those things is just them being fully healthy. Uh, and then beyond that, healthy and ready to go for playoffs itself. So... It definitely does not seem like a month-to-month -month thing with either of them, uh, but it is good to hear that uh, No Second Miller do seem to be probably in that two- to three-week range as well. Uh, I personally would love to get No Sec back, probably take Tierney out. Uh, and then Miller, if we could finally see what he would look like instead of Smith, although I think Smith continues to have his uh, really good moments where you can point out, like, hey, this, this guy's doing quite well, and then he has the absolute blunders where you're like, yeah, that's probably why we want to try someone else out there in that spot. So looking forward to all the guys getting healthy, seeing what this lineup will finally look like if it was fully healthy, firing on all cylinders and all that. But uh, the last thing with Jack is kind of similar. Uh, it does appear to be shoulder, uh, different. Uh, the right shoulder, this one, the one he had previously injured was his left shoulder, so it shouldn't be re-aggravating anything. Uh, so that's very good news. Uh, worst case scenario, as we had talked about previously, was a month-to-month -month, uh, situation. Is now looking week-to-week. -week. Uh, I do believe Tom was saying that we're probably looking at that three to four week at most range for Jack. Uh, hopefully it's quicker. Uh, it's kind of how it worked out with his last week-to-week -week injury, but we'll see. Again, as long as we are not absolutely falling off a cliff in points, I'm not really worried, even if we happen to drop a game, especially to a Western team. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into a bit of a preview of the Avalanche. So I did pull their numbers a bit. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just stay here from the jump. This might be a bit of a doozy. Uh, they got absolutely shellacked by the, probably their biggest Western competi competition out of the Vegas Golden Knights. 7-0 thumping, as I had mentioned in the last video. They did not have a game in between, so they have two full days rest. They are now going to be playing at home with an absolute chip on their shoulder, being embarrassed by Vegas. We're going to come into the building. We beat them previously with the 1-0 victory, which looked really good. I know they really had it out to get us after uh, what we did to them last season as well. So with no Jack, no Nico, it we really need all the other big guns to step up, like all of them. We need a big Timo game. We'll need a big Luke and Dougie game. To Foley's got to land one of these snipes. He's Him and Timo have both probably could have had two goals each in the past game and a half. 
and have either been completely robbed by the goalie, blocked by a sprawling defenseman, or just missed on a really bad angle shot up high or hitting a couple posts. So if those two could actually find the back of the net without Jack teeing it up for them, that could be the difference maker in this one. I will say, uh, diving into the numbers of Colorado, they don't, there's, not, there's no weak spots, guys. Uh, all of their defensive pairings are astronomically good, surprisingly. Their worst one is going to be Kale McCarr and Taves, somehow, some way. Uh, they have the worst numbers of the three pairings. Uh, Jack Johnson and Josh Manson surprisingly have really strong numbers coming out of that third pair. Um, McCarr and Taves, again, also seem to generate more chances for than against. But surprisingly, of the three, they're the only one with a negative expected goal for and high danger chances for differential. Um, and then all of their forward lines, except that fourth line of, what is it, Tatar, Miles Wood. I definitely remember those two. And they've been getting centered by, oh goodness, um, who are they getting centered by? Oh, I didn't sort it quite right. It was uh, Ross Colton. So Ross Colton, Tomas Tatar, Miles Wood have been by far and away easily their worst lineup because uh, everyone else is high 50s, if not 60s to 70% Corsi. Fenwick is in those same ranges, expected goals for high danger chances. Really, outside of that fourth line, getting absolutely caved. And I'm talking, you know, in the 30s, um, just getting bombastic. But they are obviously getting the least amount of time of all those lines anyway. Um, obviously, you want to keep an eye out for McKinnon and Rannon. But on the aggregate, their most consistent line from playing minutes together, games played together, and from play driving, you got to keep an eye out on Andrew Cagliano, Frederick Olofsson, and Logan O'Connor has been statistically their best driving line now, obviously the wherever McKinnon and Rantanen are is their top line is gonna be their best line uh but they also obviously get the top of her matchups but this is a whole game for Colorado uh so they should be able to get let loose but yeah that uh Olofsson Cagliano O'Connor line has been scary 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 to play against so definitely keep an eye out on them now special teams their penalty kill has arguably been the best in the league, even if it's not the best percentage. I think it is top three, though. They have only, they've only allowed three goals against, and they've scored three shorthanded. So they are net neutral on the penalty kill. Uh, so us without Jack, uh, you could tell in that last game, our zone entries definitely took a slight hit. Now, we still have Luke and Brat, uh, so we should still be able to enter the zone fairly easily on the aggregate. But without Jack, you could tell they were clearly trying to figure out the exact setup, because previously it was run everything through Jack. So... If the power play is still trying to figure it out on those zone entries, we need to be very careful. Avalanche play a very up-in-your-face, aggressive style. And so if they come in and get one of those blue line stops, uh, turn the puck over, they are known to go the other way and score. Again, only three goals scored against them and three scored shorthanded. Uh, so Devils need to be very mindful of how they are taking care of those zone entries and puck possession uh, before the setup on the power play. Now, the penalty kill, I know ours has been very middling. Surprisingly, Colorado's power play has also been very middling as well. Only seven goals scored so far on the season. They've given up a couple shorties as well. So, could definitely look to take advantage of a Colorado Avalanche power play that's probably fairly frustrated with themselves. They should be top of the league, and they just currently are not quite getting that. Uh, so, would love a big game out of the penalty kill as well. Now, if I have to give a bit of a prediction around this game, I think if... Uh, Colorado comes out flying. Now, they've been shut out three of their last four, including that last thumper by Vegas. They have got to be frustrated. They have got to be wanting to come out and show that they are still cup contenders. Uh, so if we could get our very first uh, goalie steal of the season, uh, which is essentially not just a goalie making great save and keeping you in it, but like if you're getting shellacked a bit, uh, the goalie basically being your best player on the ice and the reason you win the game, that'd be that'd be great. Uh, otherwise, we're going to need a huge game, again, out of the Timo Toffoli's, uh, Brat, Luke, Dougie. Um, really going to need them to help the transition out because if we can get if we get hemmed in a bit by this Colorado heavy uh, play style game out of McKinnon Rantanen, and you know what Makar is going to do. So, yeah, uh, not too much else really to point out here. Um, you know, we know where we're at. Top two centers are injured. We have other big guns on this team, though, that can step up, and uh, this is a big test. I mean, this is not Chicago. 
Uh, this is the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, they are still very strong, but not as strong as they have been. The depth as uh, that fourth line is abysmal, but it's not as bad as you might think, uh, just looking at the numbers. Last point I'm going to make here on Colorado is, now they've had the play driving numbers very similar to us, where we seem to control a lot of play, but they have given up more 5-on-5 five -five goals against than they are scoring. We've buoyed that with our power play. They haven't quite done the same. So both teams have come in here and have generally controlled 5-on-5 five -on -five, five -on -five play and have still given up more goals than they have scored. So I think that's going to be the biggest point of this one. Who actually hits the back of the net on 5-on-5? Five -on -five? Not just who's controlling the play, because uh, I think both teams' goalie situations have been fairly waffling, uh, but who can actually hit the back of the net? And in my opinion, Timo and Toffoli have been a bit snake bit in the past game and a half. This really needs to be the one where they, they find the net. So that's going to do it for today's video. I tried to power through. Uh, hopefully it was not too snooze-festy for you guys. Uh, again, just not feeling that great. Don't have as much energy as usual. So I'm going to go ahead and call it here on this video. I am not staying up, especially feeling like this for a 10 o'clock start. I will catch a replay in the morning where hopefully I'm feeling a bit better. And um, we'll be able to give my... Basically, will be a true reaction as I won't have time to really sleep on it. I'll probably watch the game and jump right into one of these um, and give you guys my thoughts. So it's going to do it. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning as always and forever. Let's go Devils.